space. We just can't get enough of it. Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, and I'd like to talk to you today about my recent visit to NASA's facilities in Huntsville, Alabama. Myself and about 30 other folks published stuff on social media. We're excited to be invited to attend the State of NASA address on February 12, 2018. The George C. Marshall Space Flight Center is located on a secure U.S. Army base named Redstone Arsenal, so we left our civilian vehicles behind and boarded a bus for our behind-the-gates tour of several key NASA facilities. Our first stop was the International Space Station Payload Operations Center, NASA's primary space station science command post. Here's Jimmy Whitaker, Deputy Branch Chief, to tell us more. We here in Huntsville are responsible for the NASA-sponsored science, or also some international science that is conducted in NASA-sponsored research facilities. We've been doing this 24-7 for over 15 years. Next, we went downstairs to the ISS Laboratory Training Complex. They got a whole mock-up ISS module down there. Well, I'm sure we'd all think it was pretty cool to set something like this up in our living rooms so we could perform skits where we're astronauts. This environment is actually intended for flight controllers to practice station experiment operations before missions. They've got simulator interfaces, both of the, the uh, touchscreen and of the physical variety. Oh, I found one I can play with. Now these switches are interesting because you actually have to pull them out before you can put them down. On account of, you know, not wanting the astronauts to kick off them and turn off the science, apparently. That's a thing you can do in space. You can turn off the science. So, you know, we gotta pull on this real good before we flip it. Next, we arrived at the National Center for Advanced Manufacturing, locally known as Willy Wonka's Rocket Factory. As you can tell from the empty chairs, it wasn't quite time for NASA's acting administrator to deliver the state of NASA speech quite yet. Now, you're probably wondering what that big comb back there is for. That's the launch vehicle stage adapter for Exploration Mission 1. It'll connect the SLS core stage to the interim cryogenic propulsion stage because stacking different types of rockets atop each other is much easier with properly designed equipment. This is NASA, not Jenga. I was curious about the color at first, so it was fortunate that Amy Buck, lead engineer on the SLS Thermal Protection System, spoke with us about the launch vehicle stage adapter's current state. They've covered the metal exterior surfaces with a protective anti-corrosive coating and are in the process of applying lightweight foam for insulation during atmospheric flight. The foam they're using will turn orange when exposed to sunlight, which is why mock-ups of the SLS prominently feature the color orange. Our next experience was far less chromatic as we visited the Advanced Composites Manufacturing Team and checked out their work making payload attachment fins. It's a graphite fiber polymer matrix, which might sound a little bit intimidating, but don't worry, they got a machine figured out to automate some of the trickiest bits. Say hello to the automated fiber placement robot. This machine is gigantic. It has an incredible range of motion. They even agreed to do a range of motion test for us. Check this out. Like, I want to run it at normal speed. It takes a few minutes, so I think I'm going to speed it up. If you want to play, like, some sort of fancy music behind it, you can. I, I can't take the copyright hit. But, you know, feel free to listen to this with your uh, iPod and something a little bit up-tempo. Isn't that just the coolest thing? Like, it's crazy awesome seeing something this huge actually work in the real world. It's mind-blowing. So cool. Just next door was Additive Manufacturing, where they can turn a dream and a CAD file into a plastic prototype or an electron beam melted piece of flight-ready titanium hardware. I don't know what this is, but it looks really cool. And it doubles as a mirror. So you can just put this in your bathroom where the wall is above the sink and then make this stuff. It's effective. Of course, you can't go on a NASA tour and stay ignorant long. The engineers quickly informed me that these are mock-ups of pipes that'll be used in the SLS. The red material is the actual test component, and the white material is a dynamically printed support scaffold that can be easily dissolved in a large tank or pulled off with pliers. They did not have a large tank that we could dip these things into at the time, but, you know, I believe them. After lunch, we were seated for the State of NASA address. You can find a full transcript for yourself, so I'll just hit the big points. Robert Lightfoot took the podium to roll out the 2019 NASA budget. 19.9 billion U.S. dollars, an increase of 400 million over fiscal year 2018. The SLS will take us to Mars by way of the moon 
and we should expect to see a lunar orbiting habitat with more announcements and specifics on that soon. We should expect lunar prospecting rovers. Don't know exactly what they're going to look like yet. We got a lot of interesting work underway, and it's going to be a very interesting decade. So I'm looking forward to seeing how all that pans out. After the State of NASA address, we got back on the bus to visit the current home of the actual Orion Stage Adapter Flight Hardware, which will contain 13 CubeSats that serve as the secondary payload for SLS Exploration Mission 1. I realize I've been saying SLS all this time. That's the space launch system. That's that big rocket there. This room I'm in now is especially tall because it was used for the Saturn program. Now they've got like flight ready pieces of the Orion thing behind me there. I don't know, it's hard to tell. I'll probably switch to pictures I took in advance earlier. But yeah, this whole place is just gigantic. Look at that. This is a really big room with three gigantic doors that roll up. Like, I don't have a use for these in my garage, or a garage, but it's impressive. What you see behind me here is actual flat hardware for the Orion mission. They have made it very clear we are not supposed to drop our phones inside of it. We also had to put like little booties on our shoes. I guess our shoes don't drop their phones inside of it either. Shoes can be so irresponsible. So each of those trays is designed to hold a cube sand, which is not necessarily cubically shaped, although they are made up of volumes of 1U cubes. These are all supposed to be about 6Us. 6U sounds pretty good, but there's got to be a better way. Well, let me tell you, in that very same room, we also had the chance to see the SLS Block 1B, which will use those graphite fiber polymer matrix parts we saw earlier for payload attachments on Exploration Mission 2. EM2 can shed the 6U volumetric limitations of EM1 and deploy 12U and 27U CubeSats as well. I'm looking forward to hearing what kind of things they launch in there. Should be pretty interesting. We've seen how CubeSats will get to space, but what will the next space habitats for humans look like? A lot of the details are a work in progress, but NASA knows they'll need to fit on the SLS, so this mock-up is being constructed to be the same radius as the SLS core stage. They're also working on new, more flexible attachment systems for experiments and equipment, like the grid you see here, to replace the rigid rack-based system used on the ISS today. Another interesting note is that on the ISS, the crew quarters are on the outside of a central corridor, but in future deep space habitats that'll lack the protection of Earth's upper atmosphere, the crew will sleep as centrally as possible to minimize radiation exposure. I mean, I would. Just below the test habitat was the VEL, Virtual Environments Lab. The VEL tests to ensure processes are human compatible, both during construction and flight of NASA equipment. They use motion tracking and virtual spaces to determine things like, if a person has to crawl inside something and turn a wrench, how long can that wrench be? Is the task even humanly possible? They also mentioned that the Oculus was a great tool for their experiments, but Facebook keeps changing the drivers and breaking their processes. It's reassuring to me personally that Facebook gives everyone the same headache they give me. Thanks, Facebook. Human testing is very approachable, because it's performed at a human scale. The next testing we visited, however, for the SLS core module, is designed to test the forces that 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust will apply to the segments of the SLS. Now, because these will be coarsened with liquid hydrogen while they're actually launching, these pieces of equipment are cooled with liquid nitrogen as millions of pounds of hydraulic force are applied to them. Why not use hydrogen during the test? Safety first. Now that we're done looking at test stands, why don't we head back to space camp? Space camp! Woo! Oh, yeah. Is... They just told us this is the only full shuttle stack in the world. So, you know, take that the rest of the world. Should have come to Huntsville. This here's a veritable rocket garden. Look at these. They're just sprouting up like tulips or daisies or some other flower that you would generally find in a garden. But, you know, these are a little bit, um, I don't know, more American? According to the Markins, anyway. You know, people think that lunar lander, that thing was pretty quick. But you know what? I'm walking circles around it. Which, you know, I really should have some sort of steady cam for. Apologies. So this here is a replica of the Skylab, which apparently is made out of Saturn V parts. That cylinder there, and this cylinder over here, suspiciously remarkably similar. There's a reason for that. NASA loves recycling. This is an actual Saturn V rocket. Now, technically it's owned by the Smithsonian, but considering that they built the Davidson Center building around it, I don't think they're gonna get it back. It's on loan, but you know how it is. 
There's some people, you lend them a Saturn V, you're not going to see it again unless you stop by their place. You know, I never expected that I'd get to be in the same place as an actual moon rock or the actual trailer that the Apollo astronauts stayed in when they were quarantined because nobody had ever been to space that long and everybody was kind of like, oh, what if they got weird space germs? Better have a quarantine trailer just in case, you know? I don't know why it would be a trailer instead of a room unless maybe they were worried like, we might have to like tow them into the ocean if it gets real bad. I don't want to think too long about that. That's that's kind of crazy that it would... Why not just a place in a hospital? Anyway, I'm getting off track. That means I should go. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.